What's up guys, David Nader 1, 2, and 2, and it's Teaching Day. Ah yes, Teaching Day, and today we're going to be continuing our look at Yu-Gi-Oh! 101. As I've talked to you guys before, teaching my girlfriend Amanda how to play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! has been proving to be a, uh more than I expected it to be kind of thing. I have found that in the past when teaching people how to play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, they have watched the anime and, and they may have played a few like fairly casual games in the backyard with their friends. So they at least have some kind of basic knowledge of how a game functions. There's life points and monsters and traps and spells and all of that hooey. However, in trying to teach Amanda, who has basically no knowledge whatsoever except whatever she has retained, you know, from watching Duelist Kingdom when she is t when it was 10, like, like 20 years ago, <laughs> has given me an appreciation for the little things, the basic things, the 101 things. Today we are going to be going over one of the most important 101 courses we will ever do in this portion of my series in teaching Yu-Gi-Oh! And that is reading Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Specifically, Yu-Gi-Oh! card effect texts. In a later series of videos, we are going to go over what is specifically unique to monster cards, spell cards, and trap cards, you know, and break them down a card by card and, and think type by type so that you guys have a, a better understanding of all the nuances between the three major types of cards. But we are first going to be looking at, boop, that effect text in the bulk of your card's print area that isn't taken up by its pretty picture. Because I have found that the hardest thing to teach new Yu-Gi-Oh players what to do is, it's not necessarily how to play the game, like physically, it's... What do my cards do? Yu-Gi-Oh cards are not so cryptic. They are all written in plain English, and if you don't know anything other than just simply how to read, you could muddle your way through a game of Yu-Gi-Oh. However, Yu-Gi-Oh effect text is written in such a particular way that its syntax and grammar actually informs the reader of the card precisely how the card works. And this structure to the card's text is known as Problem Solving Card Text. Problem Solving Card Text was actually introduced to the game with Xyz with our Generation Force. I actually just did a top 10 best cards in Generation Force, so go check that out. Basically what Konami decided to do was write every effect text exactly the same way in the same structure to inform the players precisely how they work so that we can kind of judge ourselves as opposed to having to call a judge over in a tournament every five seconds to clarify how a card works. Effect text in Yu-Gi-Oh can be broken down to a very, very simple formula. Activation condition, then a colon, the cost of the effect, semicolon, and the effect that we will actually apply upon resolution. Period. As you know, in Yu-Gi-Oh, when an effect is activated, it starts a chain, chains resolve backwards, and then you apply the effect of a card. However, it can get a bit confusing what you do before you resolve the card and after you're su like supposed to be resolving the card. And here is where this punctuation becomes extremely important. If you are reading an effect text and you see a colon, you understand this to mean it is its activation condition. It is literally what it sounds like. You can only use this effect if whatever is before this colon has been achieved. Next, if a card has anything that must be done while you are building a chain, like paying cost or targeting a card on the field for its effect activation, you will now see that here between the colon and the semicolon. Anything before the semicolon is its activation cost. And then after the semicolon, you will have some string of text and then a period. That is the actual effect of the card. And that is extremely important, especially for you Dark World players, for understanding why some cards make your cards do things and others don't. The activation condition and cost of an effect are not actually by an effect. They are the thing you must do to get an effect, but not the effect itself. So cards that are like, when I'm discarded by a card effect, I do bleh, don't work if you are discarding by cost, because cost is not the effect. It is something you do to get an effect. I'm including this because th this is a question I get all the time. All right, so let's go through some examples. First up, Regeki. Regeki says, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. It is a normal spell card. It is a spell speed one, and you will notice there is no colon, no semicolon, just a sentence and a period. That means the card has no activation condition and no cost. You simply put it on the board, look at your opponent, and say, response? Nothing? Okay. <laughs> That is simply, you play it, it activates, nothing happens because it, it has a free activation, and then it resolves and destroys the field. Next up, Lightning Vortex. Discard one card, semicolon, destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls. This is why Lightning Force is a strictly worse version of Regeki, because it has a discard cost. As you can see before the semicolon here, it says for you to activate this card, you must discard one card. That is its activation. 
activation cost. You know this because of the semicolon. You'll also notice there is no colon, so there is no activation condition, it's just a normal spell. You just play it down during an open game state. There is also the nuance that it only blows up face up stuff, so it is just at a bare bones, its effect resolution is not quite as good as Rigeki, but that's not the point of the video. And now finally, the piece de resistance, Solemn Judgment. This counter trap reads, when a monster or monsters would be summoned, or when a spell or trap card is activated, colon, pay half your life points, semicolon, negate that summon or activation, and if you do, destroy it. Aha, see, now we've got all three things. An activation condition, <laughs> in case this, in this case, it's judgments when your opponent practically does anything. A cost, pay half your life points, and an effect, no. See, it's simple. Knowing this simple formula will let you decode the crypticness that is Yu-Gi-Oh card effects. In order to make this video worth everyone's time and not just the newbies, I think I'm going to include this second part here about special summoning, which is directly tied to our problem-solving card text. Because even us veteran players get this stuff confused, I had to research it to double-check before I made the video so I didn't say something dumb. <laughs> According to Yugipedia, a player is allowed to do as many special summons as they want during a turn as long as the special summon is a legal game action. Whether that is fulfilling some sort of a condition, activating some sort of effect to make that special summon happen doesn't matter. You can't just simply, I'm special summoning a monster. No, it's, you have to be, you have to fulfill whatever it is that the card you're trying to special summon says needs to happen or is implied to happen where it's like a synchro or a fusion or something like that. And a big issue with this is whether or not the summon is inherent or non-inherent. These are player terms to describe the difference between a special summon that starts a chain and a special summon that does not. The reason why we would care about this nuance is if I negate the summon, am I negating an effect to summon it, or am I just simply negating its summon once it hits the board? The biggest reason why you'd care about this is something like a kaiju. When I solemn a kaiju, am I stopping the tribute of my monster, or am I just killing the kaiju once it hits my board? Uh, it's the latter, if you care. And the reason why we know this is because a kaiju is an inherent special summon, meaning that it's a special summon that does not start a chain. How do we know this? Well, due to problem-solving card text, we know that cards with built-in summoning mechanics, i.e. inherent summonings, tend to have the place in which you are special summoning them from in parentheses. I actually just learned that. <laughs> But even in our little parenthesis boys, we do have two types of inherent summons here. Again, inherent is a player term. It's just easier to use than a special summons that don't start chains, saying that over and over and over again, even though it is more technically correct. Our inherent summons can be broken up into summon effects and conditions. Don't let the term summon effect confuse you, it is not being summoned by an effect, it's just the card has an effect that allows you to summon it. Oh boy, oh boy, that makes no sense. You are not activating an effect to do it, it just simply has card text telling you that you can just special summon it. This is normally reserved for monsters that are also allowed to be normal summoned, something like Cyber Dragon, which says if only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. This card can be normal summoned, it is perfectly fine, it just has the option to be special summoned, something that you can do at will during an open game state. This is called a summon effect, even though it is not by an effect. Oh boy. The other one is conditions, something like Black Luster Soldier, where it can only be special summoned, it can't be normal summoned, and it can only be special summoned by this goofy condition that must be met first. Like Cyber Dragon, you can special summon by other means, it, but it does have this own option to itself. But BLS must first be special summoned by banishing a light and dark from your graveyard. That is just how it plays itself to the board. Again, this is not activating an effect, it is simply just something you must do in order to put it on the board. To circle back around to those kaijus, they are kind of like your cyber dragon here, where they have the option to sack your, one of your opponent's monsters to play it to their side of the board. That is not an activation of an effect, it is simply the summon effect of the card. I hate that game term. That is the worst. It is not by an effect, it is just an effect. <laughs> that is so stupid. And people wonder why this game is confusing. So Dave, are there monsters that special summon themselves via an effect? I mean, some of them must be by card effect, and you would be right. If the card summoning effect is written like our problem solving card text with colons, semicolons, and periods and things, then we know it is probably an activated effect, something like Revival Jam. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, colon, you can pay a thousand life points. Semicolon. Special summon it under the field during your standby phase. Okay, so the summoning condition is when it's killed by battle, the cost is a thousand life points, and the effect is 
put it back on the board. Aha, see, this is clearly a summon by effect because it's, it's written like an activated effect. This was supposed to be a quick one, but turned into a mess. Anyway guys, that was the video. I hope I can edit this down into some sort of coherent thing because I feel like that uh, special summoning part got a little out of hand. And I scripted this first. This stuff is just awful, isn't it? I hope that was educational for you guys. And remember guys, if you don't troll the man who will, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to MetaMat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Dueling takes both luck and skill. Show this by pressing the subscribe and notification buttons now. Bear witness to these other Davinator 1212 videos. Hmm? Odeon! What is it, Master? It's time to apply the ointment. Uh, Come help me with this. I should have left with Ishizu. I can't reach. <laughs>